welcome to Intro to Pro Tools Part 2. So today we're going to talk a bit about navigation and just some basic functions in Pro Tools. So here's a session I made earlier and there's just a bit of pre-recorded audio that I have imported in via file import like that. That's all sorted. Um, so the part of the screen where you can see all of your tracks, all of the audio and sounds is called the edit window. And funnily enough, that is where you'll be doing most of your editing. So this is where we can chop tracks up uh, like so. And we can put fades on like that. And we can just easily move our stuff about. At the moment I'm in grid mode, we will talk a little bit more about the modes at a later point. This is just a simple navigation video. So it's pretty easy to edit and move stuff about in Pro Tools once you get the hang of it. Next we have the mix window. So we can easily switch between the two windows just by pressing control equals. And there you go, this is the mix window. It looks a little bit just like a normal recording console. You can see there we have the fader, which is just really good for setting the level. So when you have a bunch of tracks, you can basically just mix, hence the name, the mix window. Here we have the panning and it's a stereo track. So there are two there, but obviously on a mono, there'll just be one. And you can see our inserts and our sends, our inputs and outs. And yeah, pretty self-explanatory mix window. Um, once you get the hang of Pro Tools, you probably won't be spending an awful lot of time in this window, but it is really handy just to get a good visual representation of your levels. So if we go to about here, there we go. We can see that, oh, we're going from quite quiet to, yeah. There we go. That I just stopped and started there by pressing the space bar nice and easy. Oh, one more thing before I forget about the mix window. It's a great way of seeing if something's peaking. So peaking just means it's uh, like gone so loud that the signal quality has been distorted. And if your track has peaked, this little box right by here will be lit up red and you'll have to click on it to get rid of it. Sure. So next, we'll go over here to this little drop down box and we're gonna click on clip list. Here, you can see in this box we have our clips, which means any piece of audio that we have in our Pro Tools session. So whether that's sound we've recorded in, imported or chopped up, the clip list has a copy of everything, even things that have been deleted from the main windows. So this just helps alleviate the fear of deleting something you may need later on because uh, we know we can access a copy here. And as you can see, I just click on each of these and it highlights the relevant clip, which is really handy. Something else to be aware of is the main counter, which can be altered depending on what you need to do. So we can have it in minutes and seconds, or we can have it in time code, which is great for picture, sound of picture, uh, Foley, composition, all that sort of thing. And then we can have it in bars and beats, which is normally the ideal for music. And I'll just hide this away again. Fab. Under our main counter, you can see we have some rulers be here. And if you look here, it'll say which ruler it is. So we have our bars and beats ruler up there. Then we have our time code ruler. Then we have our tempo, which we can drop down and change. And then also we have our markers along there, which we don't have any of yet, but you can easily create one. Like so. So yeah, that's all pretty nifty. 
And I can change uh, which rulers are visible just with this little drop down box here. We can add minutes and seconds, we can add time code too. We can go absolutely nuts, but we don't need to do that because we want to see as much of the screen as possible and we want to make sure that it's as relevant as possible too. And so just the last thing I want to talk about today is this left hand side over here. So we have a track list here, which obviously with uh, one track isn't as handy right now as it might be in other sessions, but I'm sure you can imagine when you have loads of tracks there, you have to scroll all the way down. It is really handy to have just a little list here of uh, everything that's going on there. So underneath that, we have our groups. So groups allow you to uh, affect multiple tracks at the same time. Uh, this is great for editing. Uh, if I enable this group here, you can see that everything is highlighted. But as a general rule of thumb, you do not want that. So if there's a problem going on and everything's being affected, there is a good chance that you've accidentally got that highlighted. So all you have to do is click on that and highlight it. But generally, groups make it easier to uh, uh, just really speed up your workflow. And you, can, uh, you can select multiple tracks with a simple click then. And yeah, so that's it from me today. I hope you now feel a little more confident navigating Pro Tools. Cheers for listening. And this has been Alora with the Sound Nexus. See you next time.